Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to replace a broken spoke on a bicycle. On a bicycle wheel, the rods which connect the hub to the rim are called spokes. The dozens of spokes that are on this wheel take turns sharing the load that the bike exerts on it when it's being ridden. The equal tension from the spokes on the rim is also what keeps the wheel running straight and true. When one of the spokes breaks, that tension becomes unbalanced and the wheel will often become wobbly like this one is. On a typical bicycle, the spokes look like this. On one end, the spoke is bent into an elbow, and at the other end, there's a threaded section. A piece called a nipple with corresponding female threads connects to this end of the spoke. The spoke and nipple work together in the same way that a nut and bolt do, and because they have a right-handed thread, the right-hand rule dictates the direction of rotation. So now that we understand how this side of these spokes works, we can get started with removing the old broken spoke from this wheel. In my case, the spoke is broken down here at the elbow end, which is the most common place for them to break in my experience. Occasionally, the spokes will break up here near the nipple, or the nipple itself will actually break off, and I'll be covering that scenario later in the tutorial. So this spoke right here is the one that's broken on this wheel, and one thing you want to be really careful with when you're touching this is that you don't ever apply any pressure and push this spoke back up into the rim. If you do that, there's a good chance that the end of the spoke or the end of the nipple will puncture the inside of your inner tube, which will result in a flat tire. My preferred method for removing a broken spoke is to first take the broken spoke and put a slight bend into the middle of it like that. Now I take my spoke wrench and I place it onto the nipple for that spoke and holding it in place with this hand, I use my other hand to rotate the spoke to remove it. And the right hand rule tells me that if I rotate the spoke in this direction, the spoke is going to move in this direction away from the nipple, which is what I want. And there that broken spoke is removed from the bike. If you don't have an appropriately sized spoke wrench which fits on your wheel, you could instead use a small adjustable wrench like this one and adjust the jaws of it so that it fits nicely onto that nipple. So now that I've got this broken spoke removed from the bike, I'm now going to try and straighten the spoke as best I can because the next step is for me to find a replacement spoke which is of the same length as it. If you don't already have an extra spoke of the right length, my advice is to take your broken spoke to a local bike shop in your area and ask to buy a replacement. Spokes come in many different lengths, and most bike shops keep a pretty good selection in stock. In my experience, bike shops usually charge one dollar or less for a new spoke. Another option is to use a spoke taken from an old wheel that you're no longer using. I keep a collection of spokes of many different lengths that I've harvested from old wheels that I've dismantled over the years. So now that we've got a replacement spoke, how do we install it onto the bike? Let's remove the wheel from the bike so we can see things a bit easier. I have a separate video on YouTube which will teach you how to remove the wheels on a bicycle. So the key to correctly installing a new spoke onto a wheel is to look at the pattern of the existing spokes and copy it. So if you take a look at this flange for example, you'll notice that there's a pattern with how these spokes connect up to it. This spoke right here, for example, it has the elbow of the spoke on the outside, where the one after it, all we can see is the end of the spoke, and that's because the elbow is on the inside of the flange. The next one has it on the outside, the one after that has it on the inside, and that pattern just continues all the way around the wheel. That empty hole over on the other flange is where my broken spoke used to be connected. Sometimes the remainder of the broken off elbow piece will be left in there, but in this case it's fallen off. Based on the pattern, since the spokes on either side of that hole have the elbow on the outside, the new spoke will need to be inserted so that the elbow ends up on the inside. Now if I was replacing a broken spoke on my front wheel rather than my back one, this would be quite straightforward to do because there's very easy access to both of the two flanges. However, on this rear wheel, these rear sprockets are blocking my access, so before I can replace the spoke, I need to remove them to get them out of my way. The procedure for doing this can vary quite a bit from one bike to another, so if you're unfamiliar with this task, I've created a separate video on this topic which I've linked in the description below. If your wheel has a disc brake, 
there's also a chance that you'll need to remove your rotor to be able to get access to this flange. So once you've got good access to both these two flanges, inserting the spoke is pretty intuitive. Like I mentioned before, I want to insert this spoke so it goes through that hole and it will have the elbow on the inside. And the way that I do that is by inserting this spoke from the outside. So now if I take a look at that from the other side, here you can see that spoke poking through. And because the spot where I want this spoke to eventually go is this nipple up here, I need to angle the spoke so that it will come through this large gap right here. Because if I were to stick it through one of these other gaps, then it would go in a different direction and it wouldn't be able to make it over here. So now that I've got this spoke fully inserted through, I need to reroute it behind these two spokes so that it can get to its ultimate destination up here. Now for this particular spoke, this reflector just so happens to be in an inconvenient location where it's in my way. So I'm going to slide it down here and rotate it so it will not be in my way anymore. So now if I try and move it up here, you'll find that it's actually running into the rim up here. Now I don't want to bend this spoke or put a kink in it. So I'm just going to put a very slight arc into it like this to get it past there. And now I'm able to get it all the way over here to where it's supposed to go. So this spoke right here is the replacement spoke. And as you can see, I've been successful with getting the alternating pattern of elbows here at the flange. Now it's equally important that we also match the pattern of the spokes once we get away from the flange to this part out here where all the spokes crisscross each other. I've added this piece of paper behind the spokes to make it a little bit easier to visualize on camera. So this spoke right here is the one that I just replaced. And I want to make sure that it follows the same pattern that all the other ones do when it crisscrosses the other spokes. So if we take a look at this one right here, which follows a similar path, it starts down here and the elbows on the inside. Then it goes underneath of this spoke here. The next one that it intersects with is this one here. And it also goes underneath of that one. And the final one that it crisscrosses is this one. And it goes over top of this one. So the pattern that this wheel follows is the spokes go under, under, over. So I need to make sure that this one does the same. So I look down here, it starts here. It goes underneath of this one. Then it goes underneath of this one. And finally, it goes over top of that one. So I've got it laced correctly. Not all wheels are laced with the same pattern as the one that I demonstrated on, but just be sure to copy whatever lacing pattern your wheel uses. So now I can take the end of the replacement spoke and insert it into the existing nipple. Like I mentioned before, I want to be really careful that I'm not applying any force on the end of this nipple and pushing it further inside the rim. So to do that, I'm going to arc the spoke like this and gradually put it in there like that. And with this hand down here, I'm going to keep some tension on there to prevent it from pushing in there. Now with my other hand, I'm going to tighten this spoke on. So I'm going to rotate in this direction, which will make the nipple move in the down direction. So I'll grab my spoke wrench and start doing that. Place it on there like that. Start rotating in that direction and gradually taking the tension off with my other hand. So I've now got this nipple threaded on most of the way, but this spoke is still quite loose and that's what I want for now. Getting the tension of this spoke exactly right is really important. So I'm going to wait to do that until I have it back on the bike and I can check the centeredness of the wheel using the brake pads. So that I don't lose track of this spoke, I'm going to use a piece of tape to mark it. Now I can reinstall the rear sprockets back onto the wheel and reinstall the wheel back onto the bike. So now with the wheel back on the bike, if I look at where the brake pads pass the rim and I spin the wheel, of course I see that the rim still wobbles from side to side. But if I look more closely, I'll actually see the point where it wobbles the most is the point where my piece of tape is, where the new spoke was installed. The reason why it's rubbing there is because this spoke is still loose, it's not exerting enough force towards the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to progressively tighten that spoke there until it no longer rubs in the brake pads anymore. As the right hand rule dictates, if I rotate the nipple in this direction, it'll move further up the spoke, therefore making it tighter. So I'll take my spoke wrench and I'll place it on there like that and I'll give it one additional rotation of tension like that. And now we'll spin the wheel again watching the brake pads. I can see that there's been an improvement 
but it still is rubbing a little bit on this side. So I'll give it another turn of rotation with the spoke wrench. And now I'll test again. It looks like it's very close, but it still seems to be favoring that side a little bit. So I'll give it one more quarter turn. So after that last quarter turn of this nipple, I'm satisfied that this part of the rim no longer wobbles. If you were to look closely, however, you may have noticed some slight wobbles in other areas of the rim, but that has nothing to do with this spoke that we just replaced. This wheel was already a little bit out of true before the spoke broke. Getting a wheel perfectly true is definitely something that's possible, and I have a separate video on that topic if you're interested. In my example, I showed how to change a broken spoke, which broke down here at the elbow. Occasionally, however, spokes will break up here at the nipple. In this example, on this wheel, one of the nipples is actually sheared off up here. For me to be able to fix this, I need to be able to get access to the other side of that hole, and the way that I do that is by removing the tire and inner tube from this wheel. If you've never removed a bicycle tire before, I've included a link in the description below to a video that will teach you everything that you need to know. So if I take a look at the outside of the rim, there's a black rubber strip on the inside of it, which is called rim tape. I can peel that off like this, and it will expose the ends of the nipples. This one right here is the one that's broken off, so I can extract that little broken off piece of the nipple. In its place, I can install a replacement nipple and then put the rim tape correctly back in place. Then I can remove the other part of the broken off nipple from the end of the spoke here, and then insert it into the one that I just put into the rim, tighten it on with my spoke wrench, mark that spoke with a piece of tape, and after I put the tire back on, the procedure is exactly the same as what I've already shown. Another important thing to be aware of is that a loose broken spoke like this can cause further damage to a bicycle. If you were to continue riding this bike with this loose spoke dangling around and rotating around, there's a good chance that it could get snagged on something, such as this rear derailleur. If it does that, there's a good chance that it could destroy the rear derailleur. I've known of rear derailleurs being totally ripped off from a loose spoke like this. So if you're out riding your bike and you notice that you have a broken spoke, you should stop and deal with it immediately before the problem gets worse. If you have a spoke wrench with you, then you can use it to extract the existing spoke off of here. If you don't have a spoke wrench, however, what I recommend doing is taking the old spoke and wrapping it around some of the other spokes, like so, and that will keep it from getting snagged on anything. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.